uh, chiefs, education technicians, crew staff, and First Nation citizens. On behalf of Chiefs of Ontario, we thank you for the completion of the Chiefs of Ontario Education Symposium. And I believe Gord Peters has a few opening, I mean closing remarks. And then after he's finished, I will ask our elder Sam to close the conference. Chief would also like to add closing remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. Looks like uh, we have a lot of people that have, have left now. Um, anyways, I, I want to uh, take a couple minutes here to. Uh, just give some closing remarks and, and again uh, uh, as uh, as mandated and directed by the by the chiefs and the political confederacy and our grand chief who uh, who has worked really hard on this event I'm, I'm going to try to sum up a, a number of, of points uh, very quickly here but first of all I, I, I do want to uh, thank the uh, uh, the elder uh, the, many of the folks that came here to speak I do want to thank our, our, our commissioner uh, that just spoke on the TRC and, and again as he indicated uh, there's 72 calls for action uh, in the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission work uh, that are di directly related to education and I, I think that is a, a real testament uh, you know to listen to the commissioner who has spent so much time and efforts uh, on the uh, TRC work uh, to come here and, and convey a, a very important message that the work that you're doing is very critical to advancing uh, all issues on education in this country. So again, I, I just want to thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Lochow, for, for uh, having uh, come here and speak uh, on behalf of the Commission, uh, but also too in, in reference to the important work that our, our, our folks are doing here in Ontario. So can we give uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lochow a round of applause? I also want to uh, take a moment here to thank our, our ed educators and our experts at the community level. I, I, I want to say that I'm very uh, uh, impressed, I'm very encouraged by the caliber of speakers that came here. Uh, I've been given a little note here to uh, just remind everybody that all the presenters that came here, they came here on their own dime. They came here, they didn't get a fee, they, they actually did this on their own. So let's give all our speakers a big round of applause. I, as well, uh, must say that the Chiefs of Ontario uh, Education Directorate and uh, Grand Chief Gord Peters, Julia and uh, Gord, excellent work. Uh, let's give all of our staff and those that coordinated a round of applause. Excellent. As well, uh, again, those that came here uh, to participate, I think you really made the, the conference. And again, uh, just a, a couple things to reflect on here. If you think about what happened last year, there was a symposium that took place here, I think in this very room. Uh, and at that time, you'll, you'll remember it was a very different atmosphere and it was a very different environment. Uh, we were just at the tail end of a decade of darkness under the Conservative government. And, and what was different about last year's symposium was that we, we were in the education fight for our lives here in this country. Uh, we, we were in Ontario as, as directed by and, and, and behind the scenes again, uh, Grand Chief Gord Peters was, was one of those uh, uh, long-time leaders uh, that actually said, listen, we've got to do something here, and, and this is uh, what we could possibly do to stop Bill C-33. So I, I want to tell you that even though it was myself and a couple of young leaders that were up front of, uh, on the charge, it was actually the, the vision, insight, and the experience of uh, uh, folks like uh, Grand Chief Gord Peters that actually uh, gave us the information we needed to, to help stop Bill C-33. So again, uh, I do want to uh, just uh, ask folks if we can uh, give Grand Chief Gord Peters a big round of applause. Uh, and I, I always say that, uh, you, you know, these, these folks are not politicians, they're leaders. and. Uh, 
they, they come with them a, a world of experience and, and goodwill and an effort towards the, the work that us younger leaders are doing, so thank you. Um, again, so in, in reflection, we were at a very different place last year. And, and if you, you think about what took place this year, we were really uh, uh, more, more on, on the leadership side. There was a lot of tension in the room and we weren't able to, to do the webcast last year because the chief said, listen, we, we need to contain this process. We, we need to actually have these issues and concerns aired out here and, and we need to do it in a very dignified way. Uh, what we're doing here this year, uh, we're celebrating the success that you're bringing forward because what had happened in that decade of darkness that, that we were under under Conservative government was that you were faithful and you were still working towards the, the efforts and outcomes of higher education and a better standard of, of process and outcome for our children. And, and all the while we were, we were struggling politically, you were still doing your work. So again, I, I, on behalf of the chiefs and the chiefs that were here that remained virtually silent and we listened, uh, very much we owe you a, a world of appreciation and, and acknowledgement for, for your commitment to keep that going forward. Now we have in front of us a, a Liberal government at the federal level and a Liberal government in the province that are now going to start working with us to move the yardsticks on education. And again, I think a, a, a quite fitting presentation in the TRC and, and giving us uh, you know, uh, that other beacon to look at in terms of the hope uh, that we're trying to forever achieve through these efforts, but also knowing that it's not just our people that have went through this process, but there's a country behind us now. Canada has actually said, listen, uh, there is a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. There's greater awareness on that level, but there's also a greater awareness on issues like missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. And now we're going to be starting to put behind that uh, the issue of education and awareness. And again, this very uh, 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 assembly and, and this symposium is very, very important. Now let me try to spell out for you just uh, in a very brief and simple way that your, your expertise and, and uh, our re uh, resilience and the work that you've done here is, has been talked about this plan that we're going to be bringing forward. And as the minister was here and uh, Prime Minister uh, Paul Martin was here, uh, they talked about a plan. They, they, they talked about getting something out in front of government now and saying, okay, what is it you want? Now this is what I want to make clear, that our job at the Chiefs of Ontario, uh, we don't have any authority uh, to go and, and negotiate anything. What we do have is we have a mandate from the Chiefs and we have that mandate that comes from you as educators to say, we want something better. And basically what that something better is, is coming from each community, each region, each education authority. And, and as, as asked by some of our folks in the north, how does that all come together? Uh, I think what this simply is doing now is it's saying, let's bring all of this together, let's put it on these various tables, let's begin to turn that discussion into a dialogue. Dialogue that is going to look at targeted, uh, timed, and, and tangible results that we can bring it in the, in the form of newer models towards a treasury. So again, looking at the new fiscal relationship that is, that is highly visible in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that there's going to be a new way of doing business as, as uh, Dr. Wilton Littlechild spelled out in the mandate letters with this government. What we, were, what we were sure about was that we wanted a new fiscal relationship. So how does that come out in the wash? Well, it comes out by basically you providing us that information that we need to, to formulate those coordinated arguments that we bring back to the political process. Essentially, we rely on you heavily. You're giving us the direction through this symposium. So in closing, uh, just, just to highlight the, the three most important areas is our work with the, the provincial government through the political accord. Uh, we are embarking on a strategic relationship I do want to make note uh, publicly here and, and congratulate the, the work of Anishinaabe Aski Nation, Treaty 3, uh, the Union of Ontario Indians, as uh, folks will have read in the media today that there was a, a, a new master agreement uh, process that was established between the Anishinaabe Nation and the Ontario government that looks at uh, the, the provincial school system and a new working relationship with the Anishinaabe community. So again, that's one area where through the political accord that commitment is actually going to create an open space for better education for our children. So on the provincial level we're going to continue that. 
Uh, there were other organizations and agencies that were represented here, uh, that, that OSHKI is one of them, that is actually asking us to open up those tables and those processes so that way we can look at Indigenous education. So those are things that we'll be able to now bring in a more defined way to the, to the political accord process and the, uh, the work that we're going to do in, in the legislature with Ontario. Again, all the while respecting the authority and, and the negotiating uh, responsibilities of each community and region. On the federal level, uh, some very good things happened here for us in the symposium, i.e. The, the minister came out here and pledged her support. And as she did with the Hokey Pokey, she wants to get all in on this. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was more than a, just a, a friendly, uh, playful gesture. Uh, she clearly laid out uh, the commitment that said, yes, we need to make something better here. Uh, the fact that she was here and Paul Martin was here and, and we saw them lobby, uh, he was lobbying her and saying, now I'm going to come after you now that, that, I'm, that, that I'm no longer in government. We need to get behind First Nations. But you'll remember what he said. He said, you know, if we can get all educators behind the plans within Ontario, then who's going to say no? So for, for, the, for a former Prime Minister to come here and, and lobby the Minister in the open, live on webcast, there certainly is an air of, of hope that we're going to be able to see play out in our relationship with uh, the federal government. On the nuts and bolts pieces, you're the nuts and bolts folks, uh, we, we're going to have to take this report back, uh, again with the guidance and, and direction of our Grand Chief and the, the portfolio holder and the directorate, uh, this report is going to get back to you, but we now have some things that we can bring to the, uh, the process and the table with the, the federal governments. Two of those tables are going to look at funding. The other one is actually going to look at the uh, the, uh, uh, the mechanics of education. Uh, up, just of uh, one interesting note, uh, Prime Minister Paul Martin had indicated here in his commentary that it's uh, it's really troubling to him that there is no Department of Education. That within INAC, there's nothing that focuses on education other than a policy, and and we're some sort of a meager line item uh, un under the. Uh, uh, under the Ministry of then called Aboriginal and Northern Affairs Canada. But what he's suggesting is that as we bring these plans forward, then it's up to us to now push forward and help them design the proper education in, in, innards and, and the institutional framework that we need to actually make things work in our community. So again, I think that that's another thing that we'll be able to see come out of this. I think the most important thing is this. It's continuing to seek your insights ideas and your direction so that way we can work together with our committee so that the chiefs again we have our, our marching orders as leadership so that way we can continue to to advance and i, I like what dr wilton littlechild spoke about about decolonizing the mind and i'd like you to think about something for a second it's this <clears throat> that decolonization is one aspect but the very work that you're doing i, I liken it to the the process of of de-entrenchment de-entrenchment of systems that have been imposed on our people for a long, long time. And de-entrenchment essentially means the institutions, the programs, and the services that are, that are cemented in place under the Indian Act don't work for our people. What you're saying is these have to be our processes. We need to de-entrench those old systems and put in place our processes. And again, that's, that's the work that's so vital that's going to come out of this uh, symposium. So again, on that note, I, I want to thank you very much for helping us uh, with this very important process and this work. Please have a, travel safe and enjoy your much-deserved weekend. It's been a, a really uh, a, a big pleasure for me to be here and an honour to have you help us with this process. Miigwech.